Hello everyone. I uh, just wanted to check in and say hello. I'm here with uh, Nikita, my cat. She's helping me out with this little uh, little video that we're gonna do. So just wanted to talk about something that um, came out of the what's called the Bhagavad Gita, that, and it's an, it's a scripture that comes from the uh, the the ancient Hindu religion, and very interesting. A lot, lot going on there. It's part of a whole huge other story. Um, but what I wanted to talk about is this um, this idea that comes out of the Bhagavad Gita, in, in to do with the chariot. So. The chariot is a metaphor and it has to do with the idea that the chariot is your body, um, the horses are your senses, the reins and the horses and the person controlling it is like your, your mind. But uh, since we live on the East Coast, I thought you know, might, might revamp this metaphor for um, a ship. So I wanted, to, I wanted you to think about this and uh, here it goes. So think about your body as a ship, right? Um, in your ship, you have a whole bunch of crew members, your organs, your bones, your tissue, all these things that have to have to bond together to, to make the ship go forward in, uh, through the world. Um, on top of that, you have, in, in a sense, the subconscious mind that controls, it controls the ship, right? So the things like, for instance, the beating of your heart. You don't consciously think about the beating of your heart. A lot of times you don't think consciously about your, your breath. Um, although that's another part of the, the yogic training and uh, the eight step path of you know looking into pranayama and improving your breathing but that's another subject so the idea is that you know you've got this crew and the captain of the ship is your brain in a sense the, your brain controls all the functions of your body without you even really needing to do anything right you don't have to think about it um, on top of this then you have your your conscious mind, the the mind that can imagine things. It can make projections. It can look into the future in a sense. Um, you can plan for the future. It can look into the past. It can look into memories. It can analyze and examine things. So that conscious mind, what happens in our culture, unfortunately, is that conscious mind gets hijacked by different things. It's okay, honey. Your mind's not going to get hijacked. I won't let it, okay? Um, yeah, so your mind gets hijacked by all kinds of different impressions and influences that come in. So, for instance, your language makes you think a certain way, makes you project things a certain way, and this, is, this causes certain impressions on your mind. Um, the way you're brought up, the way things are influenced in the media, for instance, the media is also, you know, often trying to tell us to be a certain way and to expect certain things from ourselves and from other people. So there's all these influences out there. A lot of them aren't really good influences. I would say a lot of these influences in the media are uh, damaging to you know, your personal development, you know, to see yourself as a product and to, to just consume blindly so that you, know, you can live up to a standard of whatever they say in, um, you know, media propaganda. So going back to the ship metaphor, you have your navigator, right? So you have your subconscious mind is the captain of the ship, the, the person that controls all the organs and, um, you know, keeps the good functioning of the ship. And on top of that, you have the na navigator of the ship, the conscious mind. And what we do in yoga, at least this is the, the idea, this is the, you know, kind of what we're striving towards. And um, we're, we're trying to remove, in a sense, all these impressions. I guess you can't really remove them, really, but become aware of all these impressions that are upon us and try to see past them. And you start to strip them away layer by layer. And this is done you know, partly through... Um, partly through contemplation, meditation, studying, you know, these, for instance, these, this metaphor of the chariot that came out of the, the scripture in the Bhagavad Gita, um, it gets you thinking, you know, it allows your mind to kind of, you know, free itself in a sense and start to see the world for what it is. Uh, and to understand that, in a sense, another metaphor for this is your navigator in our society, our navigators, our inner navigator, is constantly being shown maps. Maps are everywhere. You look at your phone, there's different maps, all these algorithms of where you're supposed to go. This is what you're supposed to do. Listen to this, listen to that. Map, 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 map. To all of a sudden, if you're always on media, if you're always 
you know, reflecting yourself and basing your own identity on all these other factors, all of a sudden, all you see is maps and you don't even see the territory in front of you. So that's part of the work of this in the meditative process and the contemplative process of yoga is to strip away these different influences. Um, there's a term for it, to, for, for these impressions that come into our mind. There's a term for it in yoga called samskaras. I think I've mentioned it before. So these samskaras, all of the, these are like the, the maps constantly being put up in front of your face. And, and that, so you, we have to remove these maps one by one and kind of observe and be able to observe things without judgment and just observe that, oh, okay, I've been influenced this, this way in my life. Um, maybe I, that's not what I want for myself and you, you're able to see past it um, so I just wanted to kind of reflect on this and uh, maybe get get your thoughts but uh, this week I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna propose an activity that involves a song more like a spoken word poetry song it's actually in French I'll provide the translation uh, and it's called uh, seul which for those of you who speak French you know that seul means alone and um, I want you to kind of analyze these lyrics, think about it, contemplate it, contemplate what it means to sort of remove all of these uh, samskaras and be able to free your mind in a sense to really see what the inner navigator wants as opposed to the maps that are constantly, constantly being shown in your, you know, uh, constantly being thrown up in front of your face and telling you what you're supposed to be. So just wanted to put that out there. Uh, think about it for a second. You've got, you know, you get your ship. That's the body. Um, you've got the world that you're sailing through. You've got the captain that controls the inner workings of the body, and you've got that inner navigator. So think about who is, what is your navigator telling you? Is your navigator asleep? Um, the cell phones, for instance, that if we're constantly looking and comparing ourselves to social media. Um, all of a sudden, we're, we're, we're losing that sense of ourself, um, that inner, inner navigation. So are you letting your navigator fall asleep? Are you taking all these other navigational systems from the, from the world and using and applying them for yourself? Or are you really developing? And what yoga does is it develops, it trains your ability to navigate through the, you know, the mental world, the spiritual world, if, you, if that's what you believe in and certainly the physical world. So, I just wanted to leave you with that. Uh, what do you think, Nikki? What do you think about ships and stuff? Oh, I don't like to go on ships. I just like to lay on, on my puppy's lap, and I like to get kisses. Okay, everyone. Bye. Send your kisses to Nikki, and now that she's giving... I, sorry, I, it's really rude, Nikki, to show your, uh, to your butthole to everyone like that. Okay, she apologized. She didn't mean it. She doesn't know what these things mean. Bye everyone. Love. Mwah.